I'm Pia and this is Kini News. Malaysia recorded 20,696 COVID-19 cases from December 10th to 16th. This was revealed by Dr. Dizukifli in a press conference today. He also stressed that there will be no MCO for now. Health Minister Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad acknowledged today that the country is experiencing a sharp increase in COVID-19 cases. He said from December 10 to 16, the number of COVID-19 cases was at 20,696, a 62.2% increase from the week before. However, Zulkifli said that 97% of cases were mild. He also stressed that lockdown measures such as the movement control order are not being considered for now. KKM berharap agar situasi ini dapat dilalui tanpa perlu mengulangi, saya sebutkan, tanpa perlu mengulangi sekatan seperti perintah kawalan pergerakan PKP yang berlaku pada awal pandemik COVID-19 yang lalu. So kita tak cakap tentang PKP, we rule apa, for the time being kita tidak cakap tentang mengulangi PKP. Sebab ada yang bertanya, ada yang sudah bertanya dalam dalam ciapan ya, X. Meanwhile, according to the Health Ministry, there were also 28 deaths reported, with 85% of fatalities aged 60 and above, while 93% of the deceased were those with comorbidities. The Health Ministry is encouraging senior citizens and those with comorbidities to get booster vaccines. A DAP leader's call for local council elections to be held in Kuala Lumpur has ruffled feathers in AMNO. And AMNO leader said his party will never allow for it to be held. AMNO Supreme Council member Lokman Adam has told DAP that AMNO would never allow for local council elections to be held. This came after Federal Territory's DAP chief Tan Kok Wai made the suggestion to restore local council elections yesterday, starting with Kuala Lumpur, in an effort to give locals a democratic say in how the capital city is run. In a post on Facebook, Lokman dubbed the suggestion by Tan as an internal movement by the Lim dynasty to sabotage DAP Secretary General Anthony Lok's leadership. He said after Lim Kit Siang and Lim Guan Eng's comments on the non-Malay Prime Minister issue, now it's Tan's turn to repeat the Lim dynasty's old desire for local council elections. He also told Kit Siang that they will never allow local council elections to be held and will fight it to the end. He said they should stop being a tool of Dr. Mahathir Mohamed and sabotaging their own party. At present, Kuala Lumpur only has MPs and Kuala Lumpur City Hall is run by the federal government. Critics, including those from AMNO, had in the past warned that local council elections would lead to racial instability as Malays would reportedly lose power in such polls. Perikata Nasional lawmaker Wan Ahmad Faisal Wan Ahmad Kamal also spoke out on the matter. He said bit by bit, Kit Siang's Malaysian dream is set to be fulfilled under the UMDAP or AMNO DAP movement. A senior police officer has been charged with the murder of a teenager who was killed in a hit-and-run accident. A senior police officer who was involved in a hit-and-run which killed a teenage motorcyclist in Pera has been charged with murder. Bernama reported that no plea was recorded from the accused, Mohammad Nasri Abdul Raza, when the charge was read out before Magistrate S. Punitha at the Ipoh Magistrate's Court today. Muhammad Nasri is accused of causing the death of Muhammad Zaharif Afendi Muhammad Zamri, 17, near Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Jati between 12.05pm and 12.40pm on December 15. Muhammad Nasri was charged under Section 302 of the Penal Code, which is punishable by the death sentence or imprisonment of between 30 and 40 years and not less than 12 strokes of the cane upon conviction. Case mention has been set for February 7, 2024, while no bail was offered. Yesterday, the Attorney General's Chambers, in a brief statement, had said that there was sufficient evidence and testimony to justify the murder charge under Section 302 of the Penal Code. Meanwhile, the police have denied that the accused officer was given special treatment during his appearance at the courthouse. Police have denied that a senior police officer who was charged with the murder of a 17-year-old student was given special treatment, allowing him to bypass the crowd of journalists and video crews at the Ipoh Magistrates Court compound today. Pera Deputy Chief of Police Azizi Matari said it was not about double standards or preferential treatment as some have claimed. He explained that a heavy presence and strict control of police officers during the murder charge proceedings were carried out for security purposes. 
He added that the officer in question was now held in Taiping prison until his next court appearance. Previously, several media outlets claimed that Muhammad Nasri Abdul Raza entered the magistrate's court from another route that allowed him to escape the media's attention. According to the Star, Nasri was also surrounded by a heavy police presence that obstructed the media from getting clear shots of the accused. Meanwhile, the New Straits Times reported that the situation was different from other murder cases where the media were allowed to easily record and photograph the arrival of the suspects at the complex. They said only a Bernama photographer and one Astro Awani videographer were allowed to obtain visuals of the accused, with Nasri being allowed to put a piece of black cloth over his head. After being brought out of the court complex, he was then ushered into a heavily tinted four-wheel drive escorted by four other vehicles. Nasri is accused of causing the death of Muhammad Zaharif Afendi Muhammad Zamri. He was charged under Section 302 of the Penal Code. No bail was offered and the court has set February 7, 2024 for case mention. The exchange of words between YB Viral and Rafizi continued today with the PN influencer claiming that Rafizi was watering down a debate challenge into a question and answer podcast. A social media personality has accused Economy Minister Rafizi Ramli of watering down a debate challenge because he's afraid to lose to an influencer. The individual, who is known as YB Viral, said this in response to Rafizi's invitation for them to attend a podcast. In a statement jointly issued with civil society group Demi Nagara, YB Viral said the debate challenge that turned into a Q&A and discussion podcast is a testament to how low Rafizi has sunk. He questioned if Rafizi is afraid of losing a debate to an influencer who he accused of just spreading stupidity. YB Viral and Rafizi have been taunting each other on social media for over a week, with the former branding Rafizi as the stupidest economic minister. On December 10, Rafizi initially said he would arrange a debate, but five days later, he extended an invitation to YB Viral to be a speaker on a podcast. In the posting announcing the invitation, Rafizi said the podcast dubbed Young Baka Menteri would be an opportunity for YB Viral to burn him and prove that he is the stupidest minister. YB Viral then dismissed the invitation for not being a debate. In his statement last night, the influencer said he is putting effort into making a debate happen, including reaching out to MCA President Wee Ka Siong. Separately, YB Viral and Demi Nagara also accused the government of censoring critics, especially those involved in the CSO. They cited how Demi Nagara's website was blocked as proof of the alleged censorship. Joachim has clarified that a directive from 2020 banning displayed products from containing non-Islamic greetings has been voided. Jakim has responded to the ban on festive greetings, saying a 2020 directive has been removed. In a statement today, it said that business premises which have the halal certification are not prohibited from adding such greetings to their products, including cakes. The department says it will conduct a review of all matters pertaining to the halal certification procedure. It added the statement issued in 2020 is no longer in effect with this explanation. Under the 2020 directive, premises with halal certification were not permitted to display products bearing the halal logo that carried such a greeting. The clarification from Jakim came after a viral post caused an uproar among netizens when a cake house told its staff in an internal circular not to write Merry Christmas or Xmas on their cakes. It said it will instead provide a season's greetings message claiming a fear of violating the company's halal certification. Jakim then clarified the issue, saying there was no prohibition on halal certificate holders writing festive greetings on cakes for customers to take home. Following the viral post, the bakery in question had been accused of being racist, which it denied. Its operations manager reportedly said they had no choice but to adhere to the ruling or risk losing its halal certificate. Mas Ermiyati has questions if the cabinet approved the new MM2H conditions. This came after Tiong King Singh said she should be probed for seditions over her previous remarks on the matter. Opposition MP Mas Ermiyati Samsudin has questioned whether the cabinet had approved the special edition of the Malaysia My Second Home program. She alleged that the application and approval process of the conditions were lax and would open the nation's doors to an influx of foreigners. 
Ermiati said, as a sovereign country, it is our responsibility to ensure that every grant of a PR status in this country is carefully scrutinized and not just dependent on the ability to place a fixed deposit. The Masjid Tana rep also cited national security as a cause of concern, alleging that North Korean spies had entered Malaysia under the MM2H program before 2020. Yesterday, Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Tiong King Sing called for a sedition probe on Mas Ermiati after the letter alleged that China nationals who joined MM2H would immediately be eligible to become permanent residents. Mas Ermiati had made a claim following Tiong's announcement last Friday of the special edition for MM2H applications, which are split into three tiers, silver, gold and platinum. The platinum tier requires applicants to put 5 million ringgit into a fixed deposit and those who qualify for the platinum tier are also eligible for PR status after they get the MM2H pass. Tiong said that the special MM2H edition coincided with Malaysia's upcoming 50th anniversary of diplomatic ties with China. However, he said applications for the program were open to citizens of all countries. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Pia. Thanks for watching.